good evening everyone. Today I am going to shoot a little video here about how this flail mower, a little bit more. I've done two parts of the flail mower and we're going to do a little one more here. Um, give you a little bit more in-depth review of it. Uh, I'm going to mow around this old pond I have. Um, you can see from the camera, i got a camera set up um, outside the tractor on, on the tripod. So you can see from there, you'll be able to see me work this uh, pond around the edge and stuff and like I said before my previous one it's nice you can see where your mower is going you know where you cut and then you can go on that part that's cut and make sure you're not getting too much slope so first off I'm going to talk about the, the flail mower itself so in the other camera I have it pointed so you can see the, the back of the flail mower and the back of the tractor um, it's in an upright neutral position right now um, but just to give you an idea of what's going on I got it raised up all the way right now uh, uh, one control controls the adjustment of whether you want at 90 degree or so this can go 90 degree up like so only like past 90 almost like if you wanted to cut along a tree line or something like that um, or you can lower it down which I've done along the ditches I do it along the levee or my pond dam I say um, the ditches yesterday I mowed you know maybe I'll get a picture of it afterwards you know just to show you but um, you know, I have it tilted down, you know, sometimes, you know, 25, 30 degrees. It will go down uh, 58 degrees, I think it is. Um, I'm going to show you here. Without hitting the ground, that's that's right there. I'm hitting the ground, if, if you look at the other camera. Um, so, uh, so you can, go, you can probably go a little bit more than that if I raise it higher, if I had a ditch, you know, something that, you know, would hang it over. But in this case here, you know, my hydraulics are all, all the way up, and that's as, as much tilt as I can get to it. Now, one thing that's pretty cool is, so there's there's flat, and you can mow it like this, you know, if you want to. And then the other control, um, like say this is right behind the tractor, um, the other hydraulic will shift it out, like so. And then again, you can change the tilt the way you need it, you know, tilt it up, tilt it down. There's also a bracket on the on this mower I've never used before, but if you want to keep it constantly in a 90 degree, or not 90 degree, but the, the um, parallel to the ground like this, there's a red bracket. I don't know if you can see it from back here or not, or from this camera view or not. Um, yeah, you can on the uh, right hand side, um, back over where my finger point over here somewhere. There's a red bracket on there, and you can mount that bracket and it has two pins on it, and that will keep that mower always like it is like that right there so it will not tilt down it won't go up so if you're mowing on flat ground you know it won't uh you know you can't move it it just goes with the ground itself so um i i've not had a use for it yet but i'm sure you know like i say at some point maybe i will but um anyway we're going to mow along this pond today um see how much cleanup i can do how close i can get to the edge i've never mowed this pond uh so i have no idea i just took a pass you know you can probably see for the other camera um, you can see a pass I've taken, um, so I want to see how many passes I can get, how close I can get to the edge, you know, being comfortable. You know, once I get done, then that's it. You know, if, I, if I'm comfortable, uh, I got this little inlet in front of me here. I don't know how soggy it is. You can usually tell when you mow, you know, how if there's any water up in there, if it gets mucky or not. So that's one thing I got to be careful about. I don't want my tractor sinking in the mud, you know, me tilting to one side and getting stuck down here. So anyway. Um, Hopefully this works, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna fire it up, and uh, we'll get on the get on the ball and get some work done. It's, it's about four o'clock now, so I've got a few hours. I want to try to get some stuff done here. Like I said, I will try to do some pictures of the ditches I did. Looks pretty nice now. I wish I would have been able to post it yesterday, or at least the video. I wish I would have done to you, but in this case, I can't.
Sometimes even one. Um, just so I can get like to know, I'll probably go down over here. Uh, I don't know the problem at all, so I'll go down a little slower. But so, as I say, somebody had questioned me about the jerkiness. You know, and I and you can adjust the hydraulics for the um, three point, you know, from and down. So I could probably smooth that out a little bit. Um, I got it pretty fast right now, so if I would slow that down, that would help in lowering, you know, you don't get that jerky that's lowering it down. Now going up, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if that really helps going up or not. I'm just going to look at the manual for that. I'm not going to see my nose out there and make a comment, but like I said, I know it does slow the drop. Um, and if, as far as going out and in, that's as smooth as can be, and then also tilt, uh, 90, you know, down, down to, you know, 58, that's, that's as smooth also. You don't, I don't get any jerky up there at all. So, enough that you want to jam the lever, you know, but I draw like you know, There's no need for that, so. I know some people have been commenting that other, other flail motor, mowers, um, tend to get jerky. This one here, like I say, it doesn't, you know, just the up and down on the three point. I could probably, I don't even see here, the a knob I could turn and probably slow that down a little bit. That's why I'll check and just make sure that angle, you know, I'll, I'll relax a little bit more down, you know, it's a little ball of, ball of the contour of the bank. Through some of this old uh, oak straw I had, and that stuff wiry. I tell you, it doesn't cut as nice as like the field cuts, you know. But and it's also very dry, so you know, once in a while I leave a few sprigs here and there. Stuff is really gnarly, wiry stuff. All right, I'm on the other side again. I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but I'm just uh, extending it out to the right of my tractor. And this camera might pick a little bit of that up too. Now this stuff here, it's not that oat straw. You probably can see from the other camera how uh, well it cuts. It just, there's nothing to stand in here. You know, it's grinding everything up. It's pulsing everything down. Really nice. My passes are just a little draw at the end of the pond here. Like I said, I have no idea if this is wet down here or not. So far, it doesn't look wet. So I'm hoping I can get a lot closer. Getting out of the oat straw on the other side over here, so that would be nice. Got these white little flowers and stuff that we cut. I can see some water out there on the edge, so I can't close the water bed on this side. Another thing you gotta worry about, which I like to slow it down, I think I'll slow it down the first year. One thing you gotta worry about is you know, you don't want to hit a, a, a hole, a gopher hole or something, you know. So, you know, that's another thing you can be careful of. Is, you know, you don't want that back tire on the front. I always go have the front tire do it. You know, I can feel it back out of it. I don't want that rear tire getting something and sinking down in there. You know, or soft pot along the end of the pond. But, you know, as I mentioned yesterday, we will get to see the video, but, um, you know, taking it slow is the best way to do it. I know it. You know, might think, oh my gosh, you can fly around here, you're going so slow. Well, if you've never, if you've never voted before, a good way to get in trouble is go fast. You know, you don't want to hit something and all of a sudden your pond, your tractor sitting at the edge of that pond, and you're inside the cab. Well, I'm no hurry. Now, 
Oh wow, we're, we're getting really close to the edge now. I can see the mower getting close to the edge. I'm not. The mower guy. I'd say this pond's never been, I don't think the pond's probably ever been mowed this close to the edge before. Alright, there's another pass. Wow, this side's looking really good. Alright, so go ahead and extend it out. down. Take a little pressure off the end of it so it slopes down and I'll look and check it here in a little bit. So I'm going again, I got first gear because again I don't know this bank. I'm getting close to this bank too, so or the edge of it. So I'm gonna drop the front down a little bit. I can see it's hanging up a little bit up in the air. Just up a little bit like this, drop it down a little bit. Probably hear it really churn the brush. There's some got yeah, some twiggy stuff in here. Nothing, uh, no trees, twiggy stuff. There's a little stump down there, not the stump, but a piece of chunk of wood. We're probably gonna hear that in a minute. couple little uh, cedar trees in front of me here. I don't know if I'm going to get those or not. I don't think I am. I can see water up in this one. This little cove here. So I got a feeling that we're not going to make too many more passes here. That's fine. Tilt it down a little bit. Make sure we're covering it. My tractor's right at, uh, right, we're only about 12 degrees right now. Getting a little bit more. You know, I get worried about this little edge right here. I just can't tell if it's soft or not. It doesn't look soft where I'm at, so. Turn the corner. Gonna swing out a little bit. That's fine. All right, we're gonna come back in. Get this other side over here. Okay, if you got any ponds or, or fence rows, or I've said this before in some other videos, you know, but you can't beat one of these things. Especially along your timber line too, you know, you get these little saplings and start encroaching on your on your field and stuff you know you can't get them with a bush hog unless you want to run into the trees or hang it over you know unless you go back through a couple of trees down but in this case here all right here i'm well, it's still at 12 degrees here nothing about it though you know you know, you're at 12 degrees, something about tilting towards the water is not a comfortable feeling. Not in the life. You know, I can see it's dry here, but, you know, every little dip and clump you go over, you know, and like, you know, I hope it's solid, you know, and I can see it's solid play here. But I just don't want no false edge here, you know, you know, where maybe the pond is undercut or something. So I really don't want to take a dump. this is in the water a little bit. You probably can't see it in this one here. I doubt we're going to be able to see it the other one, but it doesn't hurt any. All 
Alright, make my way back out. Do another pass. Now, something else, if you, if you haven't seen my other video, um, there's another question asked out there. Let me track this back on here real quick. I guess you can leave it hanging outside, but I don't do that. I, uh, you know, it's a little bit too much balance for me. So I'm wiping the stress on it. But what I was getting at is somebody asked a question out there if they could use a uh, quick attach. Now, I'm just if, you, if you haven't watched any other videos out there, um, or if you, you haven't read the comments, I guess. But anyway, the comment was, can you use a quick attach? No, you cannot use a quick attach on the, on the flail motor because the offset. There's an offset. Uh, one, one tenth higher or one tenth higher the other one's lower so you can't use that and they do that in order for that shaft to go swing over to the right foot bar they don't really swing it over to the one side so you gotta have that offset and so that quick attach you cannot use a quick attach to go to that offset not a big drawback you know if you got a quick attach you just disconnect it for that time which if i did it this morning i unhooked the bush hog I, I haven't been using my quick attach on my bush hog because the pins were on. I need to get some bushing for it. But I picked up the bushing, but until I got bushing for it, I went ahead and just hooked up the three point. So in this case here, I just unhooked it, hooked up the playoff mower. So it's just a matter of taking the three pins out, your center link, you know, and your two bottom pins, and then hooked up the playoff mower. Now, you know, eventually I'll put the uh, quick attach back on and I'll use it, you know, with the uh, bush hog and, you know, my box scraper or something like that. Quick attaches are nice in the back, I'll tell you what. You know, just like they're nice on the front. All right, I'm approaching the other side again, just drop it down. Turn the corner. Uh, this is going to be interesting. No idea what I can do here. Just be really careful. dry though. Dry is not the problem now. It's getting closer to the edge and not hitting any holes or anything. That's that's the problem now. So I might even put it down a little lower. Check out the bank before it's slowing up. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be, you know, this flail board's gonna be hanging over the water. And I hope there's no false, uh, you know, my. You know, it's 12 degrees, but it's way about the darn cold. You just can't see them. It's not worth. It's not worth the risk. You know, they got an undercut that comes out. You know, and they hit it. And even though I can see where it's cut, like I can see a little bit of undercut there. You know. But I don't know how much it is, you know, how, how, how stable that is. Like, I've never cut this pond before. Not my other pond, I've been around it. I mean, I, I trust the, the edge of the pond, you know, it's really solid pond. Like, there's one there. 
I can see it. You know, one of those little undercuts that comes in, you know, it's like, wow. I'm not sure I can do another pass on this. And I'm not sure I need to do another pass. We'll see. We might be able to get parts of it. That's fine too, you know, you go in and you do a part and then come out. I'm at the water and that's pretty much all the way around this thing now. We're going to see if we're going to hit these two cedar trees here or not. Like I'm just crawling. I hope I'm going slow enough that I get in trouble and get myself out of trouble. Well, I think we're going to take these cedar trees out. We'll see. We'll see if the camera picks it up. The other camera. swing out like this, you know, throws it out over the water, so it kind of makes it nice. Just like that, I got it all. Well, folks, that is it. Hope it didn't bore you too much. Hope it gives you a little bit of information about quail mowers, going around ponds and stuff. You know, not an ad from the company itself, but personal use. Um, there's not a lot of cons about one of these things. Um, you know, the only one maybe is you gotta be careful of the weight outside. So if you got a tractor that can handle this, is a 54 horse Massey Ferguson. I think the weight on it's, I want to say around 58 or 59, might be 65, I don't know. But, um, tires are loaded. All right, well, that is it for this evening. Power this down. I want to thank you all for watching. Um, you know, if you like these videos, please like and share. I'm trying, I'm trying to post a lot more now. I've been down here in Missouri a lot more, so it's a lot easier to post. Thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.